Hey, hey, developers. The other day I created a view app and I realized I didn't add any unit testing or end-to-end -end testing to it. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can go into an existing view app, add end-to-end -end testing with Cypress, how you can add unit testing, either Mocha or Jest, and how you can do that really simply through the view UI. We're also gonna look at a few errors that I saw along the process and a few gotchas that you guys should know about. And we'll also create a couple of tests. So. Let's take a look at this all, let's begin. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of the Vue.js in action book, which you can get the first chapter for free. You just need to look in the description below. I have a link to it. Okay, so I had created this webpage the other day. If you don't know, Last week, I created a new app using the new view function plugin API using this new setup function. I kind of went through a couple of, of simple examples on it, but I want to go into this app now and add testing. When I originally created it, I added no testing. So if you look inside our package JSON, we don't have any mention of tests at all. We just have linting. We don't have a test folder anywhere. So this should be a, a good way to, a, a good example of how to do this. And then we'll also create a couple of ex tests. So the way I, I like to do this is for my terminal inside my app, I just, uh, I make sure you, obviously before you start, make sure you have the Vue CLI installed. If you don't know how to do that, you should look at the Vue CLI website. And you just type in Vue UI. And what this will do is it'll open up inside your Chrome browser the view graphic user interface. And if you haven't seen this, this is a really cool feature that view supports where it uh, kind of gives you an easy way of, of going in and doing things. So here is the dashboard. This is what it looks like. I'll make it a little bigger. And from this dashboard, you can see, you can uh, kind of gives you examples of what to do. So first thing we need to do is we'll need to import in a project. So I'm gonna click this little home button at the bottom. And here's a couple of other examples I did earlier, but I'm gonna click import and I'm gonna find this app right here and add it in. So if I click here, so here's the folder. I went ahead and drilled down to it to YouTube example and I'm gonna click import this folder. And here I am, I'm inside this folder now. And now what I can do is uh, install plugins. So I'm gonna click the little plugins folder and you can see here, I don't have many plugins installed, but I know I wanna install unit tests. So I can click the little add plugin button at the top and I'm gonna type in unit and it's gonna come up with a bunch of options here. Here's view CLI plugin, unit jest, unit mocha. So these are plugins that are already pre-configured. They're going to run a few things we need to get started. I'm just gonna use mocha. Obviously jest will work fine too, but I'm gonna use mocha. I'm gonna install it. And it goes to this little spinner here and it just takes a moment and it'll get installed. Okay, it installed. Now I can click the finish installation button and it's going to basically invoke it. And you can do this from the command line too. I like doing it from the UI. It just makes it easier. And it's just installing the additional dependencies. And it's going to, here in a second, it's going to tell me what files it changed. Okay. So you can see here it added, changed my package JSON file, add this new test unit, view CLI service test unit. You can see I added some dev dependencies that we need, including chai and then it added an example test. So I'm not gonna commit the, the changes yet, I'm just gonna skip it. And let's go and add something else. So you can actually just search on add plugins for anything, So, but we're gonna do Cypress. And that, that's what I like about Vue, there's just this plugin architecture, just makes it really easy to add anything you want. And I'm gonna add the Cypress end-to-end -end tests. If you don't know what Cypress, it's a really easy to use end-to-end -end test runner. It only works on Chrome right now. They are changing that in the future. Okay, it created the installation. There's really no post installation. It doesn't need to invoke anything. I'll just click finish installation here and it'll tell me what files it changed. Okay, you can see it added some cypress.json. It did add something to the package.json, this test end to end um, and some more configurations, some ESLint rules and uh, some more Cypress stuff that just defaults when it installs. So cool, so I'm not gonna commit everything, but here it is. Now I have the end-to-end -end Cypress 
and the mocha and the chai installed. Now I have everything installed. I'm going to go ahead and control C and close out of the UI for now. And we'll do, need to do a little bit more work. So first, let's see if we can get the tests to work. Um, so first thing we need to do then is just to see what happens when you run it. So if you do npm run test unit, then it will try to run. And it should probably give us an error here because we don't have anything configured. So we, it's compiling and it says, hey, look, your hello world.view doesn't exist, so it's not going to run right. So that's what we kind of expected. So if we go back in here, uh, we can go into our tests folder, unit tests, and we'll look at our example spec. First of all, let's just rename that to uh, home. Because So what we want to do is in our source folder, we have these views, we have this home, and I just want to check to see if the, if this unit, if this text is correct, basically. So if everything's right with the component and this text is correct, this h1 random dog images. So that shouldn't be too difficult. The way we want to do that is we'll go back to our home spec file and we'll just do a couple modifications here. Okay, so uh, what I did here is part of the view testing tools that we installed is this the view des test utils and it allows you an option to do shallow mounts and that means we can mount the component and we can then have access to everything inside that component. And the way we do that is we can use wrapper.find and that finds the h1, which we know if we look back at home.view is the only h1 we have in the page, random dog images. Obviously, if this was a real production app, I'd probably have more uh, better classes and, and IDs with some of these things. But I wanna find the h1 tag. I'm gonna look at the text and make sure it equals random dog images. So let's just save it right now and see what happens. And you might notice an issue, so we'll see. So I'm gonna run npm run test unit again. Uh-oh, it aired out. So um, it gives us an error that syntax error, unexpected token, comma. So let's fix that. Maybe we're missing something here or we're having one less, too many, uh, not enough braces here close it so that's the first problem let's try it again okay so here's another error so this one is saying it's failing fetch is not defined now if we look at our component our home view what I'm doing is on this setup hook here I'm doing this git dog and if we go into our uh, func JS file our git dog actually uses a fetch but uh, Mocha doesn't understand fetch. It's actually not normally part of Node, so we need to fix that. And uh, to fix that, and actually I had to look this up when it happened, because I did not know, is we need to install this isomorphic fetch and then change a little bit of the configuration here. So first we need to do is npm i, and we're going to install this isomorphic fetch, isomorphic fetch. And that'll be a dev dependency. So I believe by default it'll install as a dev dependency, but I just want to explicitly put it dash D, which means it's a development dependency. It doesn't need it at runtime. And so if we go back to our package.json file, now let me close this, actually save, changed it. If you look in here under dev dependencies, we now have isomorphic fetch. And what we can do now in our package.json file which I was just at, is there is this view CLI test unit right here. This actually accepts different options. So I'm going to require a dependency. So let's see if we just do isomorphic, if I could spell it right, isomorphic fetch, morph, isomorphic fetch. And we'll see what happens now when you run it. Okay, so this time it fails and it says equal is not a function. So renders h1 tag is still failing, um, but it's a different type of error this time. So let's see what we did wrong. Um, this actually should be right here and it should be equal. So we'll just put this right here 
and make sure it's right here. Okay, I'm gonna run the example again and we'll see if it passes this time. So we have the isomorphic fetch installed. We also have um, everything else running. Okay, great. So it renders the H1 tag as we expected. So cool. So this works. You know, I could probably do something very similar too if I wanted, you know, maybe I just want to check to see if uh, the button works too. So I'm going to have do this. Button has correct text rendered. Okay, I went ahead and added that test in. Let's see if it works. If I run npm run test unit. Oh, this one failed. Um, cannot call text in an empty raptor. Okay, so it didn't find the my counter. Um, so I just need to make sure that's in there correctly. So if I go back to compon uh, to my views, I have this button right here. So let's let me add an ID my counter. I thought it was already there. It's not. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and run it again, which I'll just do right here. And I'll see if all the tests pass. Cool, so now I have two pass tests passing and it works pretty well. Um, of course, if I wanted to, I can go in and, and add more tests. Um, this wrapper is pretty, I can do button presses, I could do clicks, I could see what happens, but for now I'm just gonna leave it as is. So now the next thing we need to do is see if we can get Cypress working. And if we do that, we can take a look here. It added in um, under tests, end to end. And then under end to end, we have these plugins, specs folder. All we really care right now is the specs folder. And what this is saying is uh, my first test visits the app root URL. So really we need to open up the app root URL at localhost 8080. And then we're just gonna look at the H1 tag just like we did before. And I'm just going to copy and paste it from my other test, which is this one. So we know it should say random dog images. So if I'm going to go back here, um, I'm going to paste it. Okay, let me see if I can go ahead and run this. So first, what I need to do, if I run Cypress testing, you have to have a server running at the same time. So I'm just going to do an npm run serve and make sure that runs and starts. Just take a moment. And now since it's running, I'm gonna click the plus arrow here and create a second terminal using my terminal here. And I'm gonna do npx uh, cypress. And this is the command to run cypress. Now we can run it either in visual mode, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna run it on the command line. I'm also using bash for windows. So um, since I'm in this, this kind of remote Linux environment, I can't really run the visual part. So, but I'll just run it the command line and see if it works. So I'll do npx cypress run and it should go ahead and run and don't worry about the the live gl errors that's just because i'm running it from this bash from windows and what this is doing is it's running the test headlessly on my server to see if it passes so you can see the first one passed and the second one passed so you see here this one passed and this one passed as well so um well this is basically uh just one test it visits the app root url one passing and then it shows you at the end of all the tests together so cool, so now we have it all running. So that's basically it. I just wanted to show you that quick introduction of how to get set up and running with unit tests and Cypress tests. Now, one thing cool about Cypress is that it has tons of options. I just, this is the basically the, the easiest test you can do it with, do with cy.visit and cy.contains, but I can certainly create a second, um, let's, let's create a second, Let's create a second test and I'll show you. Like we can do, um, let's see, let's say when we click on the, uh, when we click on the button, so you can see here's the web page here, that it increments it and then this count is correct at the top. So that should be pretty easy. Let's create that one real quickly and I'll show you how. Okay, so this test is, I'm just gonna call it pressing it changes counter when button is pressed and then i'll go ahead and write the rest of it here this is just a really simple test it's just i use the cy.get i use the my counter which is the id i set to it i click on it and then i make sure that the value changes so i'm going to run my cypress run again 
Cool. So it went ahead and both of them passed. It also also creates a test file. So if I wanted to see it running to see what it did, I can look at the test file. Okay, so here is the test file. You can see it's loading up the web page. And it was really quick, but it went ahead and passed. You see the visit the app route passed. Um, and, and everything seemed to work fine. So all the tests passed, the two inside there, uh, everything is great. So that's, that's, that's the nice thing about Cypress. It creates these video files that you can then use to see what happened. If you guys have any questions about Cypress or unit testing, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll answer it for you. And thanks for watching. Take care.